Hey all, Matt Hepworth here, and I just have a simple video with a simple task, and that is to accurately contrast the UADX native plugins uh, processing power versus the UAD DSP. Stay tuned, let's get to this. Okay, so here we are. I have one of the new Spark UADX API plugins here, and I have every module enabled. And also, just to be safe, I'm gonna, hello, I'm gonna do some control offset just in case something sees Unity as being bypassed, which I've already run some tests and I don't believe it does that. But just to be safe, we've got everything enabled here, everything in action. And I'm now gonna duplicate that 23 more times to give us a total of 24 instances here of the API. Now I'm just going to record enable, so all channels are record enabled and do a little recording. Hello! This is a test. This is a test of the UADX broadcasting system. This is only a test. All right. Um, I'm going to let that go for just a little bit here, but you can see CPU fairly steady, but not perfectly steady. It's between 36 and 46. Pretty decent test. And just so we're clear, I have nothing else running on this system at all. I'm actually patched out to a capture card that's connected to another Mac. So there is nothing else running on this system. So this is a real world situation with an M1 processor. 24 API visions, just about 40% CPU. And that's with every single module engaged. Now I'm gonna insert the UAD version, that's DSP, and we'll see how many of those we can get with the same settings here. To be completely fair, I also have load lock disabled. Okay, I've got the UAD version inserted, and I'm just going to copy and paste the exact same settings so that this is completely fair. Record enable. Hello. So I just replaced that first one. Just gonna delete these because that's faster. And just gonna keep running as many of these as I can until the DSP's full. Okay, so there's 14 now inserted. Go for 15 and see if we get the dreaded DSP exceeded error. And yes, we do. Okay. The beautiful part, 3% CPU. For a perfect apples to apples comparison, I'm just gonna convert these all over to the UADX version again and see what the CPU goes up to. Settling down about 30, between 28 and 32, so we'll call it 30%. And for the fairest comparison, I actually have the buffer set to 32, which might be typical for somebody actually using a native workflow. And now, let's see how this works at 96K instead of 48 kilohertz. Save, copy in, convert. Give this a second. Okay, now we're gonna open that 96 kilohertz session. and see what our CPU jumps up to. Go ahead and save. Okay, now we'll record and enable all these tracks. Check our playback engine. Set the buffer like it should be. 64, and there we go. Try some actual recording here and see what our actual CPU does. Hello! Some interesting results here. Let's check activity monitor.
141% CPU on Pro Tools. Interesting. So, interesting result. I actually thought that the UAD plugins upsampled to 192 kilohertz, um, but based on the fact that the CPU is lower at 96 than 48, maybe I'm mistaken and it's actually 96 kilohertz that it upsamples to, which means it doesn't have to upsample. Um, this is odd. Now for completeness, let's go ahead and switch these all over to Neve 1073. Neve. Move the knobs a hair so there's something happening. The important part is the EQ is active. Okay, so there's one, and let's duplicate to 23 more. And record enable. And there we go. Pretty steady, about 55. And let's do some record. Go, 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 Neve 1073. Little jump there, but for the most part, we're hanging out in the upper 50s. That is 24. Let's delete 10 of these. So we match our API test. And now let's save a copy of this to 48 kilohertz and see what the CPU does. 40s at 48 kilohertz. So I am almost certain that these are actually upsampling to 96 kilohertz. Very, very interesting. Bottom line is the M1 handles the UAD pretty well. I would say it's on average three to four times as powerful as a quad, uh, which is pretty impressive. I mean, a quad is no slouch either. And the beautiful thing is, I could now put more UAD plugins in here without affecting the CPU whatsoever by using the DSP versions. So, pretty cool. We have not only your DSP, but we can use CPU or vice versa. You can start on the CPU and then add DSP versions as needed. So, a pretty darn cool time we live in. And I guess no test would be complete without pushing this thing as far as we possibly can. So I'm just gonna duplicate uh, 10 at a time here and see how many we can get up to. percent I'm gonna try to squeeze six more in there <laughs> and uh, that way we get to an even 50 okay we are pretty much pegged here at 50 Neve 1073s. Um, that's honestly quite a bit. Let's record enable. And I'd be surprised if this ends up being reliable. Oh yeah, it's hating me. <laughs> it's like, nope, not doing that. So 50 is a no-go. Pull just a couple of these out and see if it makes any difference. Okay, so let's try 48 at 48 kilohertz. And record and see if it works. No. It's pretty unhappy at this point. And the whole system is just as sluggish as can be. system just hates me. So for playback, yeah, maybe you can get 48 or 50.
but it's definitely not able to record at that. So I'm gonna kill a few more, we'll go to 42. Let's see if we can get a stable here long enough to record for a few seconds. Okay, 42. As long as we're keeping it under 90, it seems to be stable. I'm getting a little bit of redraw stuff that's kind of weird, but that's all right. So, 42. Turns out that the number of 1073s you can run at 48 kilohertz with a low buffer is also the answer to the question of the universe. 42. Cool. Anyway, please leave me a comment if uh, there's anything I missed or anything like that. And like I say, I'm going to reach out to UA and just see if 96K is what they're upsampling to because that is pretty puzzling on the uh, 96K actually using less CPU than 48. So anyway, thanks for watching. Matt Hepworth, see you next time.